The newly independent Republic of Costa Centava discovers massive oil deposits and rapidly enters the world trade markets. Oil will dominate Costa Centavan politics for the next century. Costa Centava's economy is hit hard by the collapse of oil prices. Poverty, crime, and failed social programs all lead to an attempted coup by former Costa Centavan soldier Gerardo Delgado Vargas. But the coup is suppressed and Vargas is jailed. Pro-Vargas supporters overthrow the government and Vargas is elected president by popular mandate. Arguing for greater sovereignty and less dependence on the U.S., Vargas quickly reforms the Costa Centavan constitution threatening the political influence of the upper and middle classes. A trade union strike escalates into an attack on the presidential palace, resulting in more than 100 deaths. Independent international media report the military's use of a new biological weapon, later designated CBX gas, to decimate the strikers. Vargas immediately takes control of all public airwaves to declare the attempted coup a failure and to condemn the U.S. for alleged CIA influence over the strikers. Your 9-11, our 4-11. All of history is about oil, but this is not Texas. There are no cowboys here, Mr. President. Congress passes a bill sponsored by Speaker of the House Davies to increase the number of visas for Costa Centavan oppressed dissidents seeking asylum in the U.S. In a televised speech, Vargas thanks the U.S. for being, quote, so willing to accept our nation's garbage. Vice President-elect Fritz meets with representatives of the Vargas government in an attempt to ease tensions. Armed with imagery of the hideous deaths caused by CBX gas, American protesters claim that the vice president's olive branch is really just an oil branch. At the invitation of the president-elect, a delegation from Vargas's Costa Centavan government arrives in Washington, D.C., coinciding with the new president's annual pilgrimage to the Lincoln Memorial. The FBI, the CIA, and the Secret Service are put on heightened alert. Friday, January 20th, and the world is out in force for today's inauguration of our next President of the United States. It's going to be a cold one, folks. We've just gotten word that the President's motorcade has left the White House for his farewell tour of the city. A uh, time-honored tradition. We haven't seen the President-elect as of yet, but dignitaries and world leaders are already gathering at the Capitol for the swearing-in ceremony. In other news, the South American summit is underway. Pierce. Do you have the president in your sight? Identify yourself. This is a secure channel. You're in violation of- We may not have much time, Agent Pierce. The president's in danger, possibly from within. You have to trust me. Give me a name. In the current situation, I'm only going by SST. And what does that stand for? You wouldn't know it, son. It's Latin. Virginia, even. You're definitely the right man for this. Listen to me. Someone at the very top has compromised the Secret Service. And are you in on this supposed compromise? Your real name Oswald? There are tyrants everywhere, Johnny. Who's the Oswald to President Vargas? Save it. You're just Semper to me. You need to earn trust, not just demand it. I always earn my keep. Watch them all from the top down, or you'll lose the President. Semper? Semper, are you there? Hello? Oh, hey, uh, excuse me, you mind if I get a picture? It's for my boy. He wants to be a Secret Service agent someday himself, you know. To protect the president. Step back, sir. No fun. Hold it down! Repeat! Hold it down! This is Agent Pierce. POTUS detail. I have multiple armed assailants. The president has been hit. I need backup. Attack is ongoing. I have no backup.
ballistic vests stop the bullets, not the pain. These guys weren't civilians, Doyle. And not homegrown assassins, either. More like a foreign hit squad. That guy Semper knows what's going on here. He called the whole thing, top to bottom. That suggests to me he's in on it now. As if he's not, I would have expected him to have done something more to stop it from happening. All agents, we have explosives in the Capitol building. Enough to bring down the entire building. We have over 100 civilians in the line of fire inside. We need evacuate. Wait, I found something else. Oh my god, I'm down in the... What's going on out there, Agent? It's hard to say, sir. The attacks are widespread but focused. I need all of you to stay put until we get this situation under control. You'll forgive my pessimism, but I think that suggesting you can control a tidal wave. Every law enforcement agency in D.C. is dealing with this, Senator. What's vital right now is our sweep of the Capitol building for explosives. Explosives? Agent, as Speaker of the House, I expect a full report. This has gone beyond political assassination. It's a militaristic assault, Mr. Speaker. Are the President and President-elect still alive? The last update I had, they were safe. That's good news. Where are they? Sir, I have questions about the Vice President-elect. Do you know him well? We served a few terms in Congress together. Why? Did you notice anything... unusual about his dealings with the President-elect? Son, you don't pay much attention to global news, do you? They hated each other. The story goes that Richards only put him on the ticket to get the votes. So they were political enemies. They couldn't even agree on the color of the White House. Their infighting practically split the party, and it certainly weakened the nation. Thank you, Senator. Here, use this if you have to. I'll do whatever it takes to defend this nation. Take my advice, sir. Start by watching your own back first. Mr. President-elect, sir, we need to get you out of here. He's the president now, sworn in 15 minutes ago. Mr. President, the White House is overrun by hostiles. I strongly suggest we... We're not going out into some firefight so we can make history by losing two presidents in one day. We hold here until the cavalry comes. Sir, I need to speak with you alone. Anything you want to say to me, you can say in front of Fritz. All right, if you insist, sir. This attack has been highly coordinated, well beyond what could be plotted from beyond our borders. We believe someone from within the government may have been involved in the planning, someone with diplomatic connections. You'd better have specifics to back up your speculation here, Agent. Do you have a name? Not yet. But Mr. President, we also found CVX gas in the Capitol building. Another reason to move you as quickly as possible to a more secure location. Was any of it released? No, sir. We stopped the detonation meant to release it before it occurred. Are you certain you got it all? Anything I say would be pure speculation. Maybe you know the specifics. What are you implying, Agent? I'm stating that I believe- Agent, you are speaking to the Vice President of the United States of America. Fritz, what is he talking about? The hell if I have the slightest idea. Sir, are you all right? Step away from the president! Agent Pierce, what the hell are you doing? I'm gonna ask the VP a few questions, sir. About Costa Centava, about CVX, and about his role in today's events. Move over there. Keep your hands where I can see them, Mr. Vice President. You've lost your mind, Pierce. I don't think so. Did you sign a clearance that circumvents INS jurisdiction to bring citizens into the United States? Yes, but you've been misinformed. Agent Pierce, you are right. There's been covert operations, but not military. We've been trying to reach a diplomatic settlement with Costa Centava over its arms export business for some time. We have radio intercepts and an unauthorized shipment of CVX. The VP brokered a deal with the Costa Centavan government to bring in workers and new exports in exchange for cooperation. The Speaker of the House Davies helped with the negotiations. As for CVX, I can assure you the VP was not involved. 
The President and I have many disagreements over policy, but when it comes to this, we are both emphatic that Centava's arms exports must be stopped. You've got the wrong man, Pierce. If you say so, sir. But the agency has been compromised, and only a high-level authority could... We'll talk about this later, Agent Pierce. Right now, I need every loyal man. You were right. The VP comes up clear on the manifest shipments, Pierce. There was another man on secret trips to Costa Centaba at the same time. I've crossed quite a few lines today, and I don't- You may have to cross one more. Stay alert. I see the Speaker of the House behind you. He and those Secret Service agents are too close to the President. Something's about to happen. Tell me what you know. We don't have time to just react. This hit was big, Pierce. Ambitious, really. It took inside agents to get this close. And it wasn't just meant for the President. It was meant to kill the entire South American delegation in Washington this week. Thanks to you, we found most of the CVX gas in time. Most of it? All but one bio-grenade on the manifest was found. But that one grenade is still enough gas to kill everyone in three city blocks. You think it's on board Air Force One? The shipment was signed for under an old diplomatic voucher. A former ambassador to Costa Centava. Davies. He was an ambassador to Costa Santaba for eight years. Davies was there in Costa Santaba the same days as the VP. He's our shadow man, Pierce. He was escorted by Secret Service on the trip. They were from the same field office as the agents who attacked in the DC tunnels. Agent Pierce! We still have the matter of your threat to the Vice President to deal with. Yes, sir. May I have a word with you alone? Uh, what issue is this, Mr. President? The service's investigation into a secret CVX shipment and a possible leak in the Secret Service office. You said you'd uncover an encrypted manifest? Gun! You men are sworn to protect the President! It's an ever-changing office, Pierce. They're with me. I'm in charge here now. I want Air Force One in the air in five minutes, you hear me? Or the President is dead. Stay calm, Davies. We can negotiate the release of a- No! No more talking! This country is going to hell in a handbasket, and it's all this talking that has turned us from world leaders to third world followers. It all would have been remedied today, but I can still make an example of this weak government. The last of the alleged assassins have been detained. However, the Department of Homeland Security Advisory System remains at severe, the maximum risk of further terrorist attacks. And while members of the Costa Centavan Security Force continue to be questioned, flags across the nation fly at half-mast to honor those who gave their lives this day, including outgoing President Simon and Vice President-elect William H. Fritz, who has been described as a national hero by members of the New I'd like to tell you that there's some sort of reward or medal for what you two agents did today. No, sir, Mr. President. We understand our duty. Days like today are just part of our job descriptions anyway, sir. Well, let me tell you what I can give you. The recognition and appreciation of the President of the United States. You are to be commended, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. So... We're not getting promoted for this, are we? After the day he's had, do you really want to ask? Let's wait until he's been on the job for at least one day before we bring it up. News, there are further developments. Costa Centav and President Gerardo Vargas denounced the role his people played in today's events, denying any involvement by his government. He added, however, that the presence of U.S. investigators in Costa Centava would be unacceptable, suggesting that their safety would be seriously jeopardized.
Pierce. You did good work today. Thank you. So did you, Semper. You gonna tell me who you are now? No. I didn't think so. You gonna tell me what happens now? I'm already hearing whispers about a covert operation at Costa Centava. That's almost a given. There are tyrants in every other country, son. Waving to a cheering crowd while they're killing another crowd in secret fields. Sometimes it takes a generation to identify a Hitler or a Stalin. Or a Vargas. But sometimes you know who they are in the moment. And then you can do something good for this planet we all have to share. You're an idealist then? Maybe. I prefer to think I'm a realist. A well-connected, heavily armed realist. And I watch our world. Well, after today, so will I, Semper. All the time. Always. I'll be in touch. I'll be waiting. <laughs>